All right. So I'll, I'll move on to um, the. This is just something very similar to what I talked about. Um, the skirting went to Georgia Tech, whose priority was to own funding, not bug in their family, and uh, that's where property finance came into being. Um, and yeah, so there are lots of different options. Uh, but to evaluate and understand which option is the best for you, you need to have a very clear grasp on what are the different terms. So let's discuss that. So the first term I want to discuss today is collateral. Um, it's a term that we intuitively understand. Collateral is when you put up a security and loans that don't require security are called unsecured loans. Now, the reason why banks ask for security is because traditionally loan agreements were valid are valid in one country. So if I take a loan in India and if I'm not in India, the lender can, can't really do much against me as long as I'm not on Indian soil. And I think people understand that if you look at the news. So for that reason, banks need security and they typically ask for a house, property, or sometimes even fixed deposits. And the security is essentially what you hand over from usually your parents to your bank. A, a lot of people are keen on collateral loans. Uh, they have collateral and are willing to put it up. Um, what, but in, what we see is that Yes, putting up collateral is fine, that's good. But if you don't have a collateral, that does not mean you cannot get a loan. There are other loan options as well. B, even if you have a collateral, there's always a risk attached that should something happen, then you might lose control of the collateral. As well as if there's no need to put up collateral and I can get a similar loan offer, then why would you take up uh, or why would you hand over a collateral, typically a house which can be a sensitive emotional topic? Uh, next up is co-signer, who is often known as a co-borrower as well. Um, typically, a loan would require you to have someone in your family to act as your co-signer. And traditional lenders look at your family or this co-signer to assess the loan terms. Most of the times, a co-signer is a co-borrower is your father. And the lender would look at your salary or and their credit score to determine the loan size and interest rate. Some lenders offer loans with collateral and without collateral. In those cases, they charge a slightly different rate for no collateral loans. That is, if you put up a collateral, you can get a, a lower rate. And I just want to uh, clarify that with property finance, there is no collateral, there is no co-signer, and that is because we look at the quality for education and understand uh, who uh, or what will you earn in the future, and this earning will be higher than what you are likely to earn today, and on that basis, we give you education loans. The next one is margin money, and this is a very important concept because it's talked about very little and it can make a significant impact on how you manage your resources. So margin money from how I define it is the amount you need to pay as a proportion of the total loan. So sometimes lenders do not give you the full amount. So if you take a loan of 50 lakhs and the margin money of 10%, which means that effectively the lender will only give you 45 lakhs and the student needs to provide the remaining five lakhs. So you, you took a loan of 50 lakhs, you take I have 50 lakhs, I can take that money and use it, but actually no, you don't have 50 lakhs, you only have 45 lakhs because you need to put up the rest. And since there is margin money involved, that means you cannot get the full amount of your loan and you need to plan accordingly. You need to understand of the loan amount, how much is the amount you can actually use towards your own education. So if you're ever working, please, please make sure you understand uh, this and be careful around. The next step is grace period. Okay, now grace period or is also known as moratorium period is a period during which you do not need to pay anything to the lender. Now typically lenders give you a moratorium period between when you start your education till 
we are completing education and some time after that usually six months so till six months of graduation you do not pay anything to the lender okay very important very important that interest is still calculating during this period if any lender tells you that they do not calculate interest or charge interest during grace period do not believe them ask to talk to their manager and have it confirmed the moment a lender gives you a money they will charge interest on it with prodigy finance we also charge interest but we charge interest simple so it does not matter if you the education period or if you pay afterwards it's effectively the same thing because a com because your your principal does not change there are some lenders out there who claim that the interest is calculated simple which is technically true but they require you to pay interest charged every month effectively you will be paying some interest towards the uh, lender during your education period and because you will be studying at that point of time and not earning an income this burden of paying the interest is upon your family typically your parents